Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you today. We are starting off right where we left off. No, we are starting up right where we left off. Why is it up and then instead of off? You'd think of the opposite of off would be on. We are starting right where we left off. When we, uh, we've been working on this New World pinball machine by Playmatic, which is a Spanish-made machine that was imported to the United States. And uh, it's made a little differently than some of its American counterparts, but they kind of simulated, uh, homaged, uh, appropriated uh, certain things from Gottlieb Williams and Bally's designs. So it's kind of an interesting machine. We've been working on it, and so far, we did a video showing how the thing came into us. We're fixing it for a customer. And then we did another video where we took the mech board out and worked on every little thing. And every little thing it does is magic. And then we did another video where we worked on everything in the back box. And I did that recently, which is why I still have all of the grease all over my hands from working on the score reels. You might say I did it five minutes ago. Uh, but we we figured out at the at the end of the last video that the reason that the thing... Uh, has had the score motor just non-stop turning since we got it is because it's waiting for the bonus unit to reset which is hanging on the bottom of the play field. Now you might say where is the play field Ron? Well it's in the other room. We took it out so that we could get to the uh, the mech board. So I'm gonna go grab it. Um, we'll slide this thing back up against the wall where we got a little more room and we'll pop the play field back in it and we're gonna work on the bottom of the play field to kind of get it ready in this video and hopefully by the end of this video we can see if this sucker will start up and do something for us because uh, um, we've just about cleaned everything except the play field so <laughs> uh, we'll, let me go grab it and we'll see what kind of condition all that stuff's in okay so we got it thrown back up in there now we went over this in the first video but uh, everything's slightly different than the uh, stuff that you might have seen in like American made machines. Um, but it's kind of, it has ripped it off a little bit. <laughs> the flippers will be interesting when we get up to those. But, you know what I'm interested in? In these videos we've been trying to see if it'll reset. And then I figured out in the last video that for this game to actually start, the bonus unit has to reset. So this is the bonus unit. And if you will look, watch. I don't know if that's reset or not. I think I guess it is. So I don't know. Maybe it just wasn't, maybe it couldn't tell that it was reset. So we will find out likely by the end of this video. So the very first thing we're going to do is clean up these Jones plugs. See, this could have been a problem too. See all the dirt? So I'm going to take some light sandpaper and sand those down. Don't go crazy with it, people. Just a little bit. Tell them, Matt. Don't go crazy with it. See, just a little bit. Okay, so uh, we're going to clean that out first. Clean those up first, then we can plug it back in. Um, I think this one actually goes in the back box. Um, and then we'll work through it. But let me let me clean those first. The uh, what was I just going to say? When it on that on the schematics when it showed that that connects through here. Now remember, there's two connections, so it has to send. Basically, it's connecting the uh, on the on the schematics. It showed that it was going through some relay, and then it. Uh, goes over and it has to go through a switch on this on this unit and then it has to go to that only closes when it gets back to home position and then it has to go back out of that right down to some other relay so there's a connection going in and a connection going out of the play field so if like if this dirty Jones plug this one is the connection and it just wasn't conducting electricity that would break that connection so you basically, you just got to kind of go through and clean everything. So that's what we're going to do. So I'll clean those up and plug it in, plug those in, and then we'll move on to the next thing. 
All right, so I plug those back in, and then if you saw in the earlier videos, this particular game, these Playmatics, Spanish made, has a setting, a, a place here where you can control the voltage going to just the flippers and the pop bumpers. So you can set it on 28 volt, 30 volt, or 33 volt. And I guess they just decided to do that depending on if your wall voltage was low out of the wall or something, you get a little more snap out of your flippers. So of course I set it on 33. We want full voltage on them, folks. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these relays out and clean them like we always do. So what I'm trying to get across on these videos is you don't necessarily have to know what you're doing. You just have to come up with a plan systematically work through it okay so we got the plug in and now we're going to do all of the relays and then we won't have to worry about those anymore because they're all done right so I'm gonna take them out one at a time clean the switches make sure everything's cool and then all of those should be good so how do you clean the switches well if you're a frequent viewer you probably already know I use an old worn out file um, you don't want to use anything real abrasive but uh, like a, ne a flat needle file is pretty good because you can get right in between the, the uh, blades of the switch. But don't use like a rough file where you're going to tear up the contacts. Okay. Uh, you can use a contact burnisher, but same thing. Some of those are real aggressive too. So just watch what you use. Back in the day, they used to just use a piece of paper to do it because you're just trying to get the dirt off of it. But it's kind of hard to get one in there and... Back in the day, they weren't as dirty as they are now. So I'm going to clean all those and just make sure everything's closing when it should and opening when it should. And uh, we'll get those knocked out of the way. And then uh, maybe we'll move on to uh, the light bulbs or something. All right, we're getting all those. Now notice these little clips here. I had a problem with one of these before. See how that clip sticks out over this actuator? On some of these machines, when you do that, that will make it where the actuator interferes with it and will hit it. This one's not like that because the little clips are bent. But I had I had one before where the clips were perfectly straight and that little actuator will hit it. You know, you don't want that to happen because it'll make it where that relay doesn't work. So watch out for that. So we've got all of that done. I think I'm going to do the light bulbs next just for the heck of it. So I'm going to go through and just remove the light bulbs and replace them. So that long term, they will work. Um, that's just kind of how we do it. When you pull one out inside the insert, sometimes you have to clean that. There'll be a lot of dirt and stuff in there. Well, in this particular machine, it has these really interesting inserts. You see that green one there? That are kind of like a neon pastel color. And that's just how Playmatic did it at that point. So I'm going to pull those out a little bit at a time and uh, replace them one by one and clean up the inserts and all that. And then we'll have all of the light bulbs done. So that'll be one last thing on the bottom of the play field to worry about. Alright, so I found this one that was flat, falling apart. Look at that. Uh... So if you've got one this bad, what will happen is if... If this pin shorts against this bracket here, instantly blows the fuse. So you'll get you'll get uh, sockets that are worn out like that sometimes. So I had to replace it with a nice new one. Ah, oh, look how nice! Looks brand new. And then the other trick is, if you have those inserts that you need to clean the dust out of, you can just get an old chip brush get down in there. And you don't even have to get it wet usually because most of that soot is just uh, dust. So, no big deal. All right, so we got all of the light bulbs uh, replaced. I believe those will be fine now. We've done all of the relays. I believe those will be fine now. Uh, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to clean all of the switches that are actually on the play field. Get those out of the way. Um, and then we're going to mess with this, uh, this little... Uh, whatever this is, some kind of match unit, or it's not a match unit, but some kind of light thing. So I'll pull that out so we can look at it and see what's going on with it. Okay, so I've pulled this unit off. We've got to figure out what this thing is because I found a switch that's messed up. So basically this is very similar to the coin unit. I mean the, the uh, score unit, the score reels. 
So the thing is moving around in there. It even is the same piece, it looks like. Everything's the same. And it's basically got a couple little wipers that connect different uh, contacts on this board and that board at the same time, one on each side, right? So usually these are used for like a match circuit. It's not used for that in this machine because it, uh, the match we've already done, it's in the back. But here's the thing. See these three switches here, or these three contacts, blades, I guess I should say? When this pulls in, those three kind of jam together. That's what they're supposed to do. Okay, But on the other side, see these two switches here? Can't really see it that good. Let me brighten you up so you can see it. I can see it, but I'm here in person. You're trying to view it like over the internet. It's probably losing some of its uh, brightness by the time it gets to you. I'm sure that's the issue. Okay, so we're talking about this one down in there. That one I'm hitting with my finger. I want to get where I can tell that you can tell. Mm, what's going on? Okay, yeah, see the, see the, here, I'll move it again so you can see. There you go. See how I'm making it connect? Well, that is not how it's supposed to work, so it's open right now. When this pulls in, look, it's still open. So that switch never opens or closes. So whatever that switch does, ain't being done. Right? So what I need to do is bend that, see how it never touches the long blade? I need to bend that long blade forward so that it's touching the, switch, the, the short blade and then every time this goes back it'll open it up. Now notice, I don't even know what that does, but I, how do I know that it's not working right? It's because you're looking at it and it never moves, it never does anything. And there's wires on it, so it has some purpose. And you can tell by the blade. So like if, if uh, so right now it's open, and when you pull it in, there's no way that that would ever make it close. And again, we're talking about the bottom switch there. You know, there's no way that would ever make it close. So the way it's constructed with the long blade on the top, what's going on is it should be closed right now, and then when you pull it in, this little plastic piece down on the bottom hits that long blade and opens it up. So right now it's open. It's because the long blade's bent back out of the way. So I'm going to put that back together and get that right, but uh, let's see what that does. Maybe that's part of our problem. So apparently that is what's called the spin unit. And so it moves around. Went from the, I guess there's a spinner. Again, we're on the bottom of the playfield. And lights up different things that you can score. So that switch is that one. It's the normally closed one on the add spin um, coil. And if the right target and the left target are turned, it turns on a light. <laughs> so that's all it done. So apparently that light hasn't been turned on since 1976. Alright, so I put that back together. I took it apart and cleaned it just like we did the score reels in the back box. It's very, very similar. You can watch that if you, uh, if you didn't see those. But we've got it all back together. And now I'm on to the switches. So there is a thing that happens with these Playmatics specifically. You don't see it on Bally, Williams, or Gottlieb, but the, the Playmatics all have this problem. The few that I've worked on. The switch stacks are riveted together. Okay. So they take a plate, and then they have these little spacers, and then another plate... And it's a stack of switches, and uh, they're held together by two rivets. All right, and it's you know there's different sizes just depending on what they're doing. These are for the rollovers. Here you see one that's got two sets of switches. Same thing though, it's riveted together. This is different than how Bally and Williams did theirs, and got them. They would put uh, bolts on them. It doesn't seem like it's a big deal, but the problem is the rivets break. And when the rivets break, it, you can't really fix it. So some of the stand-up ones have bolts through them with a nut on it, which is just fine, because that way the thing can't really come apart. Everything's cool. So on every one of these that you work on, you're going to run into something like this. 
So this is a switch stack that the rivets have popped loose from the plate and now you're screwed <laughs> because you can't get a screw small enough to go through there and then just the nature of the way they built their thing if there was a head on the other side of that you wouldn't be able to install it back in the game so if you get one of these just be advised that you're going to run into this problem over and over again Okay. Now, on this particular one, I've only found two that have done it. This one has done it, and then this is the one off of the stand-up switch um, that goes up behind one of the kicking rubbers. So what you can do is, you can order those new and get like the Bally design or whatever, and they mount a little bit different, but you can just put new holes in the playfield. This is the bottom of the playfield. You'll never even see it. Um, and put a a more reliable setup that's bolted together uh, in there and not have to worry about it. One, one thing that you have to keep in mind, though, is the contacts. If this is an EM, you kind of want to switch off of an EM because the contacts are made of a different material and they're a little bigger on an EM than the, the more modern um, solid-state ones. So I've got a bunch of parts play fields in the back. I'm going to pull a couple uh, switches off of, mount them back in the game, and then that will take care of those. Now, you can also say, well, if they all do it, why not just replace them all? I could. It's a lot of work, and I'd have to charge for all of it. And the guy doesn't want me to replace ones that are perfectly working <laughs> and charge them for it. So uh, this is the type of thing that people kind of overreact to, you know. There's about maybe 30 or 40 of these switch stacks in the game, and two of them have came apart. The last one I had, two or three of them came apart. So it is an issue, and you might be correct if you say that eventually they're all going to do it. They may, right? But you can't go around just fixing everything that's not actually broken that you think may break. You, you know what I mean? So I'm going to replace the ones that are broken, and then down the road if some more of them break, We'll replace those too, but I can't really justify replacing all of them ahead of time as a preventative measure because I'd have to charge the guy a couple hundred bucks for that. And it just ain't worth it, in my opinion. So that's where we're going. So I'll swap those two, and we'll be done with the switches. So while all of this looks super complicated, it's really not because we're breaking it down into little parts. So we cleaned up the Jones plug. Bam, got that back. We replaced all of the light bulbs and replaced one of the light bulb holders that was messed up. Bam. Got all that back. We cleaned all of the relays, got all of those cleaned and back in there where they're supposed to go. Bam! Knocked that out. And then I just went around and I cleaned all of the switches that are laying flat on the, uh, on the bottom of the play field. Bam! Took care of all that. Uh, I also did these while I was at it. Pop bumpers you usually don't have to rebuild. You just have to make sure that they're doing their thing right. Now if there's an issue with them, something's not right, yeah, address it. But in general, you just clean the switches on them, make sure they move, and there you go. Same thing with these. These are the old school style drop targets where whenever they come down underneath the play field after they get hit, when that falls, it lands on some switches and connects some stuff and makes this do that. And that's for scoring and usually uh, to turn lights on and off up on the play field. Um, so this is just the stuff that we're messing with on the bottom of the play field. On the top of the play field, of course, we'll have other things. So we're down to, I need to replace those two switches. Uh, and then we need to work on this unit. And we need to work on the flippers. So that's all we have left. So let me swap those two uh, switches. And then we'll start taking this bad boy apart. So this is what it looks like folded down. These are similar to the Gottlieb's. They have a, a couple pins here. And then there will, there will be one up here. So you can actually take the cotter pin or the whatever they call it, the hair clip out, the hair pin out, and lay it down. And this thing is actually moving very well. Uh, so that's not the problem, but the switches could still be dirty, so you want to clean those. Now you notice this is a end of stroke switch, is what they call that. See how whenever you get to the end of the stroke, it opens it. And so, who knows what they're doing with that, but 
uh, on uh, on this one it resets it back the other way and what you're watching is this little bar is going to touch these switches when it gets to its home position so we figured out in the previous video that something is going on with this not resetting or the the not being able to go forward because it goes back to ball zero and then it needs to go up to ball one as long as it's on ball zero the score motor will keep running so it's resetting back to ball zero but then it just stays there so um, I think all of this is fine I think it's just that the platter the contacts on it are dirty so we'll be taking this off and seeing what's going on so you want to put it to one extreme so we've got it all the way reset which is all the way that way that it's going to go and then take it off so you can put it right back exactly how it was um, and then we'll clean up that surface and hopefully that'll be all that we need to do to rebuild it since it's moving freely you don't really have to take all of that stuff apart on the inside and oil it or anything like that it's nylon anyway so you don't want to oil it but um, it's moving really well we just want to make sure that the contacts are touching and that they're all clean So that's what it looks like with the disc off. Now, sometimes you need to be really careful when you take it off that you kind of keep, you know, I videotaped it, but you need to, you need to I videotape. I video ones and zeroed it. Uh, whenever you take it off, you, you need to uh, kind of remember exactly where it goes back. Like what rivet was it touching? Now you see that arrow on there? Stuff like that can confuse you. That arrow is not what it was pointing at. It was pointing at the one to the right of that. So that arrow, I'm sure, means something, but not on this game. If you'll notice, there's nothing soldered to that trace. Right? The solder is on these other traces. Where we were landing at ball zero was right here. This is where, when we had it, you know, advanced all the way back like we did, this is where the rivets were. And uh, it lined up with this back here which, you know, you can see the traces, that's where it's been for a long time. Okay, so you just kind of need to watch that. If you do get where you can't tell where it's supposed to go, because these things have an adjustment on them where it slips, you can move it about three positions. If you get it where you can't tell where it's supposed to be, you can figure it out by checking out the schematics, but it's tough. You you, you really got to look it over and figure it all out and make sure that it's, you know, on the schematics it'll show you at position zero what wire, what color wire it should be touching. But then on the back you have to go through and find uh, um, all of the wires, which pin they're soldered to and everything. So it takes a while, but you can figure it out with the schematics. So just... Yeah, some people will put an alignment mark. So, you know, with it all the way reset, they put a little yellow mark on the wheel that lines up with a little yellow mark on the disc. Something like that, you know. But really, what's important is where the little pin is that's traveling around. What is it on this pad? Or this pad? Or this pad? Okay. So, uh, we're going to clean it just like we clean all stepper units. I'm going to use very light sandpaper. To freshen it up, get a little bit of that old grease off of there, and then we're going to put uh, synthetic grease on it and put it all back together. Much better! Okay, so sometimes whenever you're putting these back, if you look real close, see the triangle there in the middle the, the, that has uh, made an indention in the plate so you can see exactly what position the that this was on. See it? So you can usually tell exactly how it was adjusted by looking at that. So here's what I mean with that. See, I've adjusted it all the way the other way. If you look at the... You can't see it from this angle, but basically, see that line? This was actually turned, right? So we're still in the same position with the with the coil, which is that plate through the middle, and see the see the uh, pin in there? Okay, so it's on one set of contacts, another set of contacts, another set of contacts, and another set of contacts. <laughs> so it can be on one of four positions, just depending on where you have it rotated on that plate. 
but I checked before I took it apart and it's definitely supposed to be on that position there. Okay. Or at least that's how it was. So we're going to tighten it back up. You just got to check little stuff like that. So another thing you want to check is once you get that where you're, you think you're on the right spot, see the pin down in there touching the contact? You want to make sure that as it turns, that, that stays kind of near the center of each contact that it gets to. You can't really tell from the angle you're looking at it, but I checked it out and everything's cool. You don't want to get, sometimes you'll get a situation where it starts off where it's centered on the, each contact and then it, after it goes a little while, it's like riding real close to the left edge or it's actually touching two or something. So you have to, you have to adjust that so that every time it steps, it's on the right contact. You, you might have to get it where on the first contact it's way over on the left side and just, you know, towards the edge of the contact so that when you get to the last contact it's way over on the right side, but on each one of them it's somewhere on the contact. So just something you got to pay attention to. So I think we've got that ready because all of the, uh, we cleaned all the switches, everything looks cool. I think we're good. We also cleaned the Jones plug. Um, and so now the only thing that we've got left that uh, I can think of at least are the flippers. And so these flippers are the Playmatic flippers. As I remember from the last one, they worked really well. And look at the big old honking coils that they've got on them. I'll bet these suckers are strong. Uh, so I'm not that worried about the, the strength of them. You can get parts for these, I believe. But to me, they look pretty well designed. Remember, this is an EM. It's not a solid state. EMs typically have weaker flippers. But uh, the one thing that you want to look for on any flippers, but especially an EM, well, on any flipper, not just an EM, is uh, this, this link here. Where you will lose power in your flippers is, is the connection from here to here. So this plunger to the Bakelite link. Watch how I've got just a little bit of play there. See it? That's acceptable. That's not that bad. Okay. Well, if you buy them new, often they have that kind of play on if they've got the Bakelite. Um, I've had people tell me that's not really Bakelite. It's something else, but I've always called it Bakelite. It's the same stuff that the stepper units are made out of too as, as well. Uh, so if you can't get these for Playmatics, you can buy that stuff in bulk or just a piece of it and make your own. You can cut it to the same size as the original one and then drill a hole through it if you had to. Um, but that thing is held on there with a roll pin through it. Okay. But So I don't think we're going to have a problem there. Uh, sometimes if you have the flipper dragging on the playfield, you need to replace the bushing. That's what's going on. We don't have that issue here. Uh, everything looks good. I don't see any physical damage. The one thing I am going to definitely change though is that that plunger rides through like a sleeve inside the coil and that's a that's the most common wear point. So if you uh, if you get where something's sticking or it's just they're, they're little they're not as powerful as they were a really easy and inexpensive thing to do is to replace those plungers. So you basically just take the coil loose put a brand new nylon sleeve not replace the plungers replace the sleeve put a new nylon sleeve in it. So I'll crack this sucker open, and we'll see what the sleeve looks like inside of there. Um, and for now, that's all we're going to actually do to the flippers, because they look nice and strong. Oh, you also need to make sure that your end of stroke switch is doing its thing. So you want it to be closed. On some of the newer machines, it works backwards, but on these, you want it to be closed. And then as it turns around, the, that little arm on the paw is going to open it. Okay. That's gapped a little close. I'm going to open that up just a little bit more. Because that's so close that, you know, you might get where it bounces back together or power arcs over it. You definitely need that to work because if it doesn't work, you're going to burn your flipper up. That's a little better. But whenever you do that, you got to make sure... Okay, so see the big blade? Watch how when it moves, the small blade moves too. See it? You can barely see it. That's how you've got good contact. You want the big blade to actually move the small blade so that the contacts wipe each other and clean themselves. Uh, so you got to make sure that works. Um, we're going to check the sleeve or replace the sleeve. And then the flipper switches themselves need to be filed with a, um, with a file because they'll get lots of um, carbon and things like that built up on them since they have 
AC running right through them so much. You can see on this one pretty good. I don't know if you can see. It might be too dark for you. So usually that, that contact will be all pitted up. You can see they're a little beefier on the flipper switches. Okay, folks. So we're going to see if she'll do anything different now. Now, theoretically, since we've cleaned everything, it should work. But that never quite happens. That always needs a little more, right? <laughs> And there could be things on the top of the play field that are keeping it from working right, too. So you might have a switch stuck somewhere or something like that. But, I don't know. We'll see. So I'm going to turn the power on. Okay. Now, I set the... Uh, so all of the, the bonus units are... So the bonus unit is off the, the reset position, off zero or whatever, the lowest position. The ball unit is off zero. It's up on ball four or five or something like that. All right? And I went ahead and I reset all of the score units, one of them at least, uh, to one. So uh, if you didn't watch the previous video, basically whenever it starts, it will reset the fourth player and then the third player and the second player and then the first player. It actually does them in reverse order. And then it resets the ball unit, or maybe it does that at the same time. And then the ball unit goes back to position zero. And then it, the last thing that it needs to do is once the bonus unit gets back to zero, it connects a switch that makes it where the ball unit can go up to position one and it kicks the ball out. So we haven't been able to get that to go up to position one yet. It still may not. I'm not making any claims, people. But uh, I figured, hey, why not give it a shot on live TV? This is live. All right, so first it'll do the scores. Oh, our top one's tripping on us. Let me help it along a little bit. I must have hit a switch and bent it out of shape at some point. Same thing that it was doing. All right, folks, so the thing's still not resetting properly. But we've went through and we've cleaned everything. So we're down to the play field and then troubleshooting specifics. So we may have a situation where a coil has an open wire or some. We're going to have to get out our uh, we're going to have to get out our multimeter and track some stuff down. But we'll save that for the repair video, right? So this is where we are so far. She's almost she's almost working, but it won't start a game. The score motor continues to just turn and turn and turn because that ball unit won't step up one position. But we'll get we'll figure it out, folks. But at least now we know that everything under the playfield's done. Uh, all of the mechanics on the mech board have been cleaned and adjusted to the best of our knowledge. All of the score reels and everything in the back box has been cleaned and adjusted to the best of our knowledge. But still the problem persists. So in the next video, I think what I'll do, you see, I hate to, I don't like like doing all of the repairs. You know, we always do a video on all these where we make a list of everything wrong and then fix it. I don't really like doing that because you have to play it a little bit to do that. And I don't like playing it whenever the play field's real filthy because you're, you're literally damaging stuff. So I'll show you what I mean. See all this dirt and everything? Well, what happens when a ball rolls over that? It grinds it right into the paint. And this thing is such a nice finish, you know. So I, I really want to clean it up first before we play it. Um, and since we can't get it to start, we can't even we can't even uh, do like one or two little runs on it. <laughs> Sometimes we'll do that, just play it a, you know, a game or two just to kind of get an idea of what's going on. But if, you, uh, if you're play testing it where you're trying to repair it, you're going to end up playing 20 or 30 games on it. I don't want to do that whenever it's got filth all over it. So I think our next video, we'll probably go ahead and clean the play field. Then I won't have any more excuses, and I'll have to go through and uh, clean it up. Did you see this, by the way? Can you believe they put that on the side of there? I can't bring myself to take it off. I think I'm going to leave it there. You know, I was certified for scuba diving back in the day. Yep, yep, yep. Let's scuba, guys. Oh, oh I hit the second player start. 
See, it thinks it's in a game, but you, you, can't, you can't play it or anything. So we still got some issues, people. We'll figure it out, though. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for going through it so far and showing you some of the differences on these suckers. We did fix some problems, like those switches that were broken and all of that stuff that was dirty and those flippers that needed the, the end of stroke switch adjusted. You know, we're getting there a little by a little. By little. Um, and so leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. And uh, we'd like to thank everybody that's been using our Amazon link. If you don't know about that, down below there is a link to Amazon. If you are going to buy something on Amazon, if you use our link or bookmark our link and go use it every time you go to Amazon, it gives us some of Jeff Bezos' money. And we, know, we all know he's got too much money anyway. So he might as well give me some of it. So if you click the link, we basically this is an advertisement for Amazon. Uh, we have sent you to Amazon, and it gives us a portion of the regular price, it doesn't raise your prices or anything, the portion of the regular price that you pay of your hard-earned money, it slides it over lateral to a guy like me instead of giving it up top to a guy who's already got plenty of money. Now, I don't hold anything against them for having so much money. Maybe one day we'll all have that much money. Uh, but, you know, for now, I'd like to get a little, n little nibble of it until I get to his level of financial success. So I would like to thank everybody that's been doing that. And also, last but certainly not least, make sure to check out our brother channel. So my brother, Donnie, my brother Donnie is the name of the channel, the link's down below, uh, is quite a character, and uh, if you enjoy watching uh, me work on these old pinball machines, you would probably enjoy watching my brother Donnie. He's always working on something old, but lately we've been working on old buildings in a small town near here uh, in the downtown area. We're trying to help revitalize downtown. So we've been working on these old buildings and fixing them up so that people can rent them and get them back in use instead of just sitting there dilapidated and rotting away. And so far, it's been very successful. So go check it out. Uh, watch us uh, as we uh, try to figure out how to get these buildings back open. So uh, I'm usually over there on the channel with him, but he does other things like uh, small engine repair and stuff like that too that is you'll enjoy. And... Uh, He's a very funny guy, so go check that out, my brother Donnie, and uh, hope you enjoyed the video so far. We will see you on the next one. Have a good evening.